Here's a C3 algebraic fractions question and it's from, I can't think where it's from, 2006 I think. It's question two any road, I'm sure you'll find it. Right, there's three show that parts to this question which is quite unusual. Uh, we're given a function of x as three separate fractions or at least a, a number in two other fractions. Uh, we're told x can't be two and then we're told to show that x is this. So basically that means put it all, all over a common denominator. So one we put over the common denominator x plus 2 squared, so 1 is x plus 2 squared over x plus 2 squared. The 3, we need to multiply top and bottom by x plus 2 to get it over the common denominator. So minus 3 times x plus 2. And the 3 is already over the denominator we're after, so add 3. And all of that is over the denominator x plus 2 all squared. Now that's all we can do to combine these into one fraction. Now we've got to multiply out and collect like terms. Now if you do this, you'll see that we get x squared add 4x add 4. Minus 3x minus 9. Um, add 3. So it's that lot over the common denominator of x plus 2 all squared. And now we've just got to collect like terms and they tell us the answer so that will act as an inbuilt check and that should get us our full mark, four marks for doing this. So we've got x squared 4x minus 3x 4 and 3 is 7, minus 9 is minus 2, hang on, that doesn't work, 4, and 3 is 7, minus 9, what's happened there? Uh, bear with me a second, uh, sorry, that should be x add 2, shouldn't it? You should have told me as I was doing that, sorry, so that should be minus 6 there, so good job they've got this inbuilt check, 4 and 3 is 7, minus 6 is add 1, uh, divided by the common denominator of x add 2 all squared. So if I write that in, and that's as required. So that's part A. Part B says now show that x squared add x minus add 1 is always positive for all values of x. Now there's two ways of doing this. I'll show you both ways. The first way is to complete the square. This is a C1 or actually a GCSE technique. So half the coefficient of x, that gives us x squared add x add a quarter, so we need to add three quarters to make it equal to what they've got there. This is very basic, you should be able to do this from C1 like I say. So we're really being asked to show that that's always greater than zero. Now this, something squared is always greater than zero, so something squared add three quarters uh, is actually greater than three quarters, not just greater than zero. Um, I'm not going to write that out, but that's what you should do. The second method is to use calculus, uh, differentiate with respect to x. Now uh, we're trying to find a minimum point here. That's again a C2 technique. So if we differentiate the thing, we get 2x uh, plus 1. And for a minimum point, that equals 0. That's when x equals minus a half. We can show it's a minimum point by differentiating again. We get 2. Differentiate twice. I can't write this very clearly. It's not keeping up with me as I'm writing, as you can see. But differentiate twice, we get 2. That's positive. That shows that when x equals minus a half, this is a minimum point. And then try and find what that minimum point is. So we know when x is minus a half, we get a minimum point because the second derivative was positive. So as long as this minimum point is greater than zero, all points must be greater than zero. So put x equal minus a half into this, we get a quarter minus a half plus one. And that also is three quarters. So there's two ways of doing that, both ways are acceptable. I would use completing the square, it's easier. Show that the whole of f of x, so all of this is uh, greater than zero for all values, as long as it's not minus two. Well. They're guiding us through here, so we really show that this is greater 
than zero. But we've already shown that the numerator is always greater than zero. All we have to do is put that together with the fact that something squared, the denominator, is always greater than zero as well. So that's what you need to write. I'm not going to write it here. It's worth one mark. The way to write it is part B we showed that the numerator is greater than zero, but the denominator is also always positive because x add 2 squared is always greater than zero. It's only equal to zero when x equals 2, but x can't be minus 2. This is minus 2. Okay, so there's eight quite straightforward marks, I hope.